I'm setting up skimmer here. I want to show you some things about it. Uh, right here, let me show you this antenna idea. A lot of people put a rubber band to hold the antenna. Here's another idea. I just make two holes in the tail, tighten it through one, pull it out like the other. You see how that is? Put the battery in. I ended up putting the receiver and the speed control inside here simply because there was so much room here I couldn't fill it up with just a battery. Stuff rattled around. This whole area in the front, this is all empty. There's just the motor in there and two wires coming here. Here's the bottom. And I put in these pieces, put in a little bulkhead right here to separate the receiver and the speed control from the battery. And I'll put a battery in it. Uh, this battery is uh, six cells, and uh, it, they're uh, 900 SCRs. These are small ones. You see the idea here when you put the battery in, it's held right where it is by the foam in the front and the rear. That's to keep the center of the gravity exactly where you wanted it. I tried it on this airplane, and I marked it on the wing. Here's where I want the center of balance to be, right there. And that's from flight tests. But you've already marked that on yours. <clears throat> OK, I'm going to just lay the battery in here. I'm not going to hook it up yet. I'm going to put the wing on first. I'm going to use about eight number 64 rubber bands to hold the wing on. You might notice I've made a little mark so I can center the wing. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where the center is. Okay, I've got the wing on and I'm going to hook up the battery. The switch is off. I don't want the prop to start and catch me, catch my hand. Hook up the battery, stuff the wires down in there. Put the lid on it. Close it up. Now, I'm going to turn on the transmitter. I'm going to leave the antenna collapsed. Transmitter's on. I'm going to give this a range check. I'm going to walk behind the airplane and work the rudder. And I'm just going to walk back. I do this every time I fly. I'll walk back about 50 feet. And as long as I can see that rudder working, I know that I've got good range. With the antenna collapsed, I can probably go back 100 feet or so. And then with the antenna out, you get something like, who knows, 50 times that range in the air. Okay, your trim lever right there. Here's down trim and here's up trim. Later in the flight, I'm going to show you that uh, the uh, skimmer, when you give it down trim, simply flies faster. When you give it up trim, it flies slower. I'll show you that later when we fly. To, uh, I want to show you how a skimmer climbs. I'm just going to throw it into the wind, turn, turn the motor on, throw it into the wind, and the uh, video won't zoom in on it. It'll let it, you'll see how far away it gets. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try and climb up against 
find some cloud there so that you have some reference of movement. I'm just moving the airplane around a little bit so you can see how, how high it goes. You can see the movement against that cloud. I didn't time this, but I guess we're at about 15 seconds right now. Very gusty up there today. I'm going to fly back to the cloud so you can see some movement. Now that altitude right there is probably 600 feet or so, and I'm going to turn it off. Now it's just gliding. I'm going to fly across to another cloud so you can see the speed change. Now this is a small battery pack. Skimmer can do about four climbs that high. Now I'll show you something. I'm going to make Skimmer fly faster. All right, I've put in down trim, down elevator trim. The airplane went down some. See how much faster it's going? Now in this altitude, it's into thermals already, and the airplane will go easily three times that high if you want to. My problem now is going to be getting it down. There it is in a small thermal. So easy to find thermals with this airplane that uh, it makes you feel like a pro. Now here's something else. It's a little bumpy up there. I can see some wind gusts, but maybe I can show you something. When you change the elevator trim, I'm going to give up trim just to slow the airplane down and maybe you can see it. complicated by the fact that there's some very good thermals there. But it's flying quite a bit slower now. Now I'm going to speed it up. I've simply given it down trim. The nose drops a little bit, but much, much more airspeed. That would be handy if you wanted to dash from a spot here where there's no, say if there was no thermal here and you wanted to go find one. Okay, we'll bring it down. I'll bring it right over us. Watch the speed you can get on this if you just let the nose go down. Sometimes it's hard to land because it just wants to stay in the air. There it is, things. Okay. If you're just a beginner to RC flying, you might know right now I'm not even touching the sticks. The airplane just flies itself once you've got it trimmed out. Let me show you something on landing. Here's a landing where I cannot complete this circle and come back to myself. Don't try. Land straight ahead. If I tried to complete that circle, it would stall and I'd crash. Right there, more beginners lose airplanes than anywhere else. So now I have to walk and get it. Big deal. Okay, we're going to go up and do a loop. Skimmer probably will not do a barrel roll, and that's on purpose. If you have this airplane way up high and you can barely see it, you don't want it rolling. If you let go of it, it'll pretty much fly by itself. 
so it was made to be stable. All right, now here, we'll do a loop. The motor's still running, and we're in a thermal I can barely get out of. I'll turn the motor off. You don't need the motor for a loop. Look, all you need is airspeed. No problem. Do another one. And do them all day. Gentle little bit of up elevator. Up elevator, quite a bit. Now I'm easing off. There's hardly any, hardly any, now a lot. That's a loop. Through the top of it, there's no elevator. It's, here's something else you might try. If you're stuck up there real high and you can't get down, you could loop it down. That's one way to create a lot of drag. But here's some other things. Okay, the motor's off. I'm gonna hold full up elevator and see what happens at low speed. See, it, it doesn't spin, but it sort of wallows around. That's killing its altitude. That would be a good way to get down out of a gigantic thermal, because you're gonna be in a thermal where you worried about getting the airplane back. So practice that. Practice ways to get out of thermals. We're going to land short. Give it a little power. Cheat. Oops. Here's our ad for Skimmer. Soar like a $300 sailplane. It does. Skimmer equals performance. There's some reasons for that. The design of this incredible airplane. If you will build this airplane the way the plans tell you, you will have an airplane that you cannot keep out of thermals. Let me give you a look inside the kit here. Here's the box. Turn it around here. Here's the plan. Big, full-size plan. Here's all the sticks, the leading and trailing edge, and the other stick parts of the kit. Can you see this airfoil right here? That's a Selig 3021 airfoil with two turbulator spars. I'm not an aerodynamicist, but I can tell you that this is one of the greatest thermal soaring and speed changing airfoils I've ever seen. That's what makes Skimmer fly like a $300 sailplane. It truly does. To show you more of this plan, <clears throat> notice that the wing, the here, you just simply lay the wing on the plan. It's not a polyhedral wing. It's a simple straight dihedral. So the two halves build right on the plan. There's the fuselage. You can see in that uh, wing, you can see that Selig airfoil again. That that's the critter that makes this fly so beautifully. Every time I see one of my own little commercials, I say, gee, I wish he'd given me a better look inside the box. There's the box. We took the plan out. I've got the instruction over here. I'll show you this again in a minute. But here's what you get in the box. whole bundle of sticks. These, by the way, are spruce spars for the wing. This wing is tough on skimmer. You can dive skimmer out of a thermal and the wing will stay together. It'll stay in one big piece. It's a nice new kit. You've got beautiful die cutting parts just falling out. No problem with these. Isn't that pretty? Here's the uh, 
Here's another part that makes the wing so strong, the shear webs that, you, that are, connect the uh, top and bottom main spar. Again, part of the strength. Here's a bag full of hardware, rudder horn, elevator horn, a lot of little hardwood pieces. Here's a hatch cover, hinges. Here's something nice. The two fuselage sides, already cut, very carefully cut, to give you the proper angle to mount the wing and the staff. The structure of this is simple. When you get these bulkheads popped out, you just put them between here, glue them in place, and that's it. Very, very quick construction, but do it carefully. You'll be tempted to fly right through this thing and have it flying right away. Do it carefully because this is a great flying airplane. Here's the wing ribs. Look at this die cutting. They just fall out of here. Beautiful. And here again is that fancy Selig airfoil. I don't know if you can see that, but you might notice what they call a long entry on the bottom of the airfoil. That's part of the magic of this thing. Let me show you the instructions. Very clear, very well illustrated. This size sheet, here's the back side. Here's the little picture that locates what parts are which, which are which. Every step illustrated, simple structure to produce an absolutely magnificent airplane. Something that isn't obvious about skimmer. This is not a little airplane. Look at this. Here's the wing. I don't know how big that looks to you, but that's a huge wing. A lot of lift. And the fuselage. This is not a tiny fuselage. Skimmer's a reasonably sized airplane. A lot of airplane for the money. Well, that's Skimmer. We're proud of it. This may be an inexpensive airplane, but believe me, it performs like the Giants. You are in for a treat if you'll build Skimmer.